everybody, welcome back. Today I'm here at the hangar with the Piper Pawnee. In my last video about the Pawnee, we did a complete walk around. And we also talked about some of the equipment that could be attached to the airplane. Since that video, we've attached the liquid dispersal equipment or spray gear to the airplane. And we've been doing some training with our pilots to get them spooled up for the season ahead. I've been able to capture some of that training footage. And today I'd like to bring you guys along and show you what that looks like. It's important to note that not all of our training happens in one day. This happens over the course of several weeks during the spring. That all being said, I think you guys will really enjoy this. So let's get started. All right, let's just dive right into it. So after we got the spray gear attached, Austin hopped in the Pawnee and tested everything out to make sure that everything was functioning properly and there were no leaks or anything like that. In my last video on the Pawnee, the spray gear was not attached, but I placed it under the wing. So here you can see actually what the booms and nozzles look like while they're attached to the airplane. The pilot that you see in this video already has quite a bit of Pawnee time. And the purpose of today's lesson is to get him familiar with carrying more weight in the airplane, as well as practicing emergency dumps or emergency jettisons. So right here, you can see him taking off. He's got about 40 gallons in the airplane right now, and he's just practicing doing some lower level flying and making sure the spray is working properly on the airplane. This right here will be his emergency dump with 40 gallons in the airplane and just slightly less because he sprayed just a little bit of it out. So there he goes, and now the aircraft is completely empty and he's going to come back around and land. We repeated that same procedure several times that day, going up to 50 gallons, getting dumped at a time from the airplane. Here he is getting started for the next day. So the next day we started off by doing the same exact thing. We put 50 gallons in the airplane and just kind of left off where we were the day before. The next step after this 50 gallon load right here would be to move to 75 gallons and then up to 100. So here he is coming around to dump another 50 gallon load. And after he dumps this, we're going to go ahead and get him filled up with 75 gallons for the next load. Here we are filling him up. And here's his 75 gallon takeoff roll. You can see that the airplane's a little bit heavier with that 75 gallons and his takeoff roll is going to be just a little bit longer than it was with 50 gallons. The difference between 50 and 75 gallons is quite a bit in the Pawnee because of its size. So what we had him do right here is just go up to a higher altitude and get familiar with flying around with a heavier weight in the airplane. He doesn't have his GPS on here. He's not spraying anything out. He is just getting familiar with how the airplane handles with more weight in the nose of the aircraft. I also want to note that we're only putting water in the airplane when we're doing this type of training. The airplane is completely rinsed out and we're only spraying water so that there's no risk to anything on the ground. We're also in radio contact with the pilot while they're doing this type of training. And right here we just let him know that everything's looking good and he should start to lower his altitude and start maneuvering a little bit lower to the ground to get a feel for what the heavy airplane feels like closer to the ground. The heights that we're choosing in this video in, and in this training in general are higher than we would actually spray, but it's a nice safe altitude that the pilot can focus on flying low to the ground with weight in the airplane, but also being safe enough to avoid any obstacles and things like that. And I know I mentioned it earlier, but part of today's training is going to include those emergency dumps or emergency jettisons. There are many reasons why you would want to dump a load and mainly it's in case of an engine failure or some other type of emergency where you would really need to get rid of all of the uh, product in the hopper at one time. Dumping a load in an aircraft truly is an emergency maneuver. Because of the location of the hopper, when an aircraft is loaded, the weight is generally in the front or towards the nose of the aircraft. As you spray out some of your product, the center of gravity moves more towards the back of the airplane or aft. Basically, this causes the airplane to pitch up more and be more nose light when you're empty. So when you're doing an emergency dump or an emergency jettison, the center of gravity of the aircraft is changing really quickly. 
It is a dangerous maneuver if not done properly, so it's important to anticipate the change in pitch and not let the aircraft rise too much. After a few rounds of 75 gallon loads, we decided it was time to move up to 100 gallon loads. Here is his takeoff roll with 100 gallons in the airplane. You can see that this takeoff roll is going to be even longer than the 75 gallon takeoff roll, and he's just getting a good feel for how heavy that airplane is. He's going to repeat the same process of going up to altitude and doing several turns and maneuvers at altitude with weight in the airplane before we bring him back down to a lower altitude. And for those of you who think this might be kind of boring, um, it's really not. It's actually, if you're a flight instructor at all or if you've ever done a first solo in an airplane, it's a lot like that uh, from the ground perspective. We are just kind of watching and critiquing and talking to him throughout all these maneuvers and just giving him some guidance and mentorship along the way. It's really nice and important to have a radio in the airplane while we're doing this kind of training. That way we can talk to the pilot and the pilot can talk to us if they have any questions and we can also give them some critiques as they're flying. All right, so after flying at altitude, we gave the pilot a call on the radio and let him know to bring it down a little bit lower to the ground and get used to doing some low level passes with 100 gallons of liquid in the airplane. I can't remember if I said this already or not, but we don't have the GPS turned on right here. The purpose of this exercise is really to get used to flying with a loaded airplane and really with a major focus on that emergency dump procedure. We don't just practice the emergency dumps in the Pawnee, we practice them in every airplane and each pilot practices them every spring and as needed to stay familiar and comfortable with the airplane. We were liking what we saw here, so we decided to give him the go ahead to do the 100 gallon dump. And if you pay attention to this right here, you'll see that a lot more water is coming out of the airplane and the dump is a lot longer. You can see that the airplane is climbing, but he did a nice job of keeping the nose relatively level and not pitching up too much. After a few rounds of that, we decided to call it a day. The next step for this pilot would be to do some more GPS work and then combine the GPS with some water training and practice doing some passes across the field with supervision. Another thing to note too is that when you're training, it's easy to get overloaded with the airplane, which is why we try to keep training flights relatively short until the pilot has built up some stamina. So here's Austin just going over a few things with the pilot while the pilot was still on the ground. And I think that's going to wrap up everything I have. So I hope I'll get some more training footage for you guys in the future. And I'll see you next time. That's going to wrap up everything I have for today. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, please comment down below and I'm happy to get to them. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like or subscribing to my channel. As always, thank you all so much for being here and I'll see you next time.